After a stellar start to the championship chase, it's on to one of the sport's toughest tracks today for round two. ESPN welcomes you to the Monster Mile, the Dover International Speedway in Delaware. Our coverage today presented by Burger King. This racetrack's nickname isn't just a fancy marketing slogan. The monster is this mile of high bank concrete that'll punish car and driver every lap all day long and with so much at stake, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Let's go trackside for the opening ceremony. Presenting our colors today, the Military District of Washington Armed Forces Color Guard. Would you please rise for our invocation? Being presented today by Reverend Dan Schaefer, pastor of the Calvary Assembly of God in Heightstown, New Jersey. Shall we pray? Almighty God, we pause at this moment to thank you for this great country, the United States of America. We thank you for our military that are here today. We thank you for our first responders. We thank you for Dover International Speedway and all of our racers and fans. So we ask you now, as we always do, for a great race, for a safe race. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Shalom. And remain standing for our anthem today, being presented by Gold Southern Pop Artists from Island Death Jam Recordings with currently two top 20 pop and dance hits with her songs Wanted in Blue Jeans, Miss Jessie James. Yeah. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleam whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. Oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming at the rocket regular bombs bursting in our gallant proof through the night that Time now for the drivers to buckle in under overcast skies with some showers threatening, although not uh, too terribly close to the racetrack at the moment. We'll keep an eye on the weather throughout the day for you. We'll get ready to go racing for 400 laps at the Monster Mile Chase Race number two begins next. NASCAR Spring Cup at Dover is presented by Burger King, who remind you to have it your way. And in part by Pepsi Max. Tune into the Pepsi Max 400 on October 10th for your chance to win one of 400 prizes and 400 miles. And the new Ford Fiesta. It's a pretty big deal. The Chase. An unpredictable storm. Oh boy. Where calculated risk serves two masters, fortune and failure. Fickle fate can temper a champion. And turn a dance with disaster into second best. It reminds everyone the chase is a riddle. And Tony Stewart's out of fuel. Boyer can pick up the win. That keeps you guessing. Hamlin is trying to close. Until the final lap. Clint Boyer's your winner. Come on, baby. Oh, my goodness, what a thing. Wow. But like every tempest, devastation is felt in its wake. The wide open road leads to Dover. A fierce monster bent on destruction. Victory rivals defeat on a knife's edge. So venture, gamble, go wide open. Because the only way to slay this beast is to run it down. 
The Monster Mile, ominous and foreboding as we get set to begin the second race in the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup. It's a track that's put a twist in the championship every year since the chase format began. It's also a track that's put a twist in some fenders and bumpers many, many times over 400 miles. From the pit studio, Alan Bestwick with Rusty Wallace and Brad Doherty. Some storylines to begin the day. Clint Boyer trying to overcome the NASCAR penalty imposed on him after his car failed inspection after his win in New Hampshire. Boyer trying to make up a points deficit in anticipation of an appeal later on this coming week. Yeah, Denny Hamlin. you got to take a look at Denny Hamlin, too. This guy's qualified fourth, but he's not too good here. He's real concerned about it. He needs to get out of here with a good finish. Another guy I'm concerned with is Kevin Harvick. He's starting 33rd today. He keeps putting himself back in these qualifying runs and having to work his way through the field throughout the day. Could be a concern. Yeah, and Tony Stewart, what about this? He led last week's race, run out of gas in a white flag lap, but he's 25th here in qualifying. He needs a good comeback. Jimmy Johnson's the other guy. Superman's cape's been snagged. He needs to show up today answer these people with a win could be a good day for jimmy johnson we will see how this 400 miles plays into the chase for the 2010 cup and see which of the 43 drivers takes home the trophy after a gritty and grinding race let's get it started and here to give today's commands, senior vice president of triple a mid-atlantic mr mark dickinson gentlemen start your engines all right, man, fire it up. All right, buddy, crank it up. Or give him hell, bud. Good luck. Thanks, buddy. All right, buddy, go ahead, fire it up. Okay, we'll crank. Get a cop. Kidding. And while the cars warm up briefly on pit road, we look at the race within the race. The 12 drivers chasing the championship, entering round two at Dover. Denny Hamlin, the point leader, but this is a race he's dreading. Jimmy Johnson and Tony Stewart do have some ground to make up, and they're at a place where historically they've run very, very well. Johnson with five wins here in Dover. Speaking of running well, we go upstairs to three men who've been running all weekend between the broadcast booth and the casino across the way. <laughs> Marty Reed with former Dover winning driver and crew chiefs, Dale Jarrett and Andy Petrie. Right, I'm not going to tell you who's running on empty as far as that last part's <laughs> concerned. We're going to revisit Denny Hamlin, Allen, because this is a guy that doesn't run well, as you guys pointed out. But based on what happened yesterday in practice with Kevin Harvick and what you heard yesterday, uh, what's the Las Vegas odds over and under that this guy even finishes this race? Well, I think chances are really 50-50 uh, from what I'm hearing. Uh, you know, we saw what happened in practice, and, and the tempers kind of flared up in that garage. And I've also heard talking to some of the, the drivers and crew guys that this thing may not be over with. So uh, there's just a lot of hard feelings on this issue. Uh, Denny's got the most to lose. He's sitting out there pretty vulnerable. So I'm not surprised. I mean, I think, I think I wouldn't be surprised if something doesn't happen here. DJ, I've got to ask you, if it was you, and he said those comments about your team, what would you do? Well, you have to stand up for your organization you know basically by another driver challenging the integrity of your organization you have to stand up for those people that work hard to put a great product for you out there so i don't think this is over we saw denny hamlin's average finish being 22nd here he might be lucky if he has a 22nd place finish these guys are not happy with him right now well, one guy who's happy, at least for the moment, is going to be our pole sitter, and that's Jimmy Johnson, as he has picked up his ninth chase pole, his second of the year, and 25th of his career. And as you see the starting lineup come across the top, we'll tell you the people that did not qualify were Jeff Green, Josh Wise, Tess Mu Ted Musgrave, and Tony Raines is going to go to the rear with a transmission issue, and Mark Martin's car had too much gas pressure in the shocks after qualifying, so he, too, will be going to the back. Let's talk to our in-race reporter today. That is Tony Stewart. DJ? Hey, Tony, Dale Jarrett, do you have a copy? Yeah, bud. Hey, Tony, our first question comes from our mailbag in Jacqueline in Hollis, New Hampshire. Asks, does your failed fuel gamble late in last week's race make you more likely to take risks today and throughout the rest of the chase? Well, I'll be honest. I didn't feel like we were taking a chance last week. It's just uh, I just didn't do my job behind the wheel and with the pedals of uh, saving enough fuel. So, uh, yeah, I, you know, I stand behind Darren Grubb's decision 100%. Just wish I'd have done a better job, but I don't. I don't think we. Uh, I don't think we'll approach the next nine races any different. I mean, if we get any further back, uh, obviously we have nothing to lose. So uh, you know, you just we've got to play it one race at a time, and uh, we'll see how the race unfolds today. Hey Tony, as I look at this racetrack and see how rubbered up the corners are, a lot of rubber down, really black. Has that changed your approach to this racetrack? The way you have to to go about it as a driver? Not really. It's a. Uh, you know, when, when you and I ran together here, it, it used to take, uh, you know, half the race before it would really get rubbered in, and it used to make it really 
hard to to figure out what your balance needed to be, but it's, you know, Goodyear's done a really good job of finding some things to, to get some of these tracks to rubber in quicker. And the good thing is, that at the beginning of this race, it's always really dirty and uh, takes a while for it to get cleaned off and get grippy, but having that rubber down will actually help that process and make it quicker. All right, Smoke, thanks for talking with us. We'll check back with you later on. Now, and he's going to talk to your crew chief, Darian Grubb. But thanks. Hey, Darian Grubb, Andy Petrie, do you have a copy? I got you, Andy. Hey, Darian, watched uh, Happy Hour yesterday. Looked like you had a pretty good car. Did you find the setup that you were looking for in practice? I think we had a top 10 car yesterday, but we were able to go back, take some of our teammates' feedback with Ryan Newman in the 39 car, work on a few things, put it through our computer simulation last night. Really looking forward to getting out there on the racetrack today. A lot of the stuff looked really good for the changes we made. We'll work our way to the front with some fitness strategy and uh, fast race car on the racetrack. Let's how you do this job. We got a little extra incentive today with the Office Depot small business promotion. We got professional cleaning services at Greer, South Carolina out here. It's got a chance to win a million dollars tonight, so we're going to be pulling for it. <laughs> All right, dude. Looks like Tony trained you pretty good. Hey, good luck today. Thanks for talking to us. Bye, guys. Have a good day. Well, based on last week, you might want to throw out all those computer simulations because anything could and probably will happen, and we'll find out as we go green next.